So in this video, I'm going to talk about what you must know before taking SOLIDWORKS CSWA exam. So we're going to cover exam structure, essential tools, and then also go through sketching, assembly logic, and also the exam strategy. So first, let's go through the exam structure. So the CSWA exam consists of three main sections, and this is the part modeling, which is the core assemblies. And then also there is a mass properties and analysis and also drawing section that we're going to talk about later. Now, when it comes to the part modeling, this is the core section. So you're going to have to create and also modify 3D parts based on the given dimensions and configurations. So you're going to have to create a part and then you're going to have to also change dimensions. So you're going to have to modify the part. Now, this is going to test you on the sketching accuracy, fully defining sketches, feature order logic. So which feature you're going to use first, second, and so on. Also patterns and the symmetry and also updating models without breaking. So that's the first part. The second part are assemblies. So you're going to have to insert the parts and then you're going to have to use standard mates to assemble simple mechanism. So they're going to test you in a mate logic. They're going to test you on the standard mates, coincident, concentric, distance, parallel, and so on, angle. And then also they're going to test you on the understanding how assembly move. So as you're going to build these parts, you're going to build these assemblies, you're going to make these changes, you're going to have to calculate mass properties, right? So you're going to have to calculate various physical properties as a mass, volume, center of gravity, right, of the coordinate system they are going to also have to define, or you're going to have to calculate also area, right? So they're going to test you accuracy of these physical properties. So you must have the clean model and you must know these dimensions. So here are the essential tools you must master, okay? So you don't have to know 200 tools. You must know how to work, how to use them, and when to use them, okay? So we have the most common tool, which is extruded bus and extruded cut. So this is the essential tool for creating and modifying 3D geometry along linear path. Then also we have the revolve. This is where creating 3D geometry by rotating a sketch profile around axis. Then we have fillets chamfers, right? So you're gonna have to create rounded or angled edges between surfaces and always make sure that you add fillets at the end, okay? Also linear circular patterns. So you're gonna have to create multiple copies of geometry in a linear or circular arrangements. Then we have the shell. So you're gonna have to create hollow geometry by removing material from closed surfaces. Also mirror. So you're gonna to have to recognize where is the symmetry and then you have to mirror, okay? So you're gonna to have to know how to create mirror copies of the geometry across a plane or axis. Then very important, sketch relations. So that your sketch don't break, you must know sketch relations and what are the relations between sketch entities, okay? So you're gonna to have to define geometric relationships between sketch entities. Sketch patterns, then we have sketch patterns, creating multiple copies of the sketch entities in specific arrangement. Then we have whole wizard, but this is not tested so much, but also very important plane creation, right? Creating a new reference plane for sketching and feature operations, okay? So these are the most common tools that you must know before you go on the CSWA exam. The number one failure point is sketching. So if your sketch is weak, your entire part collapses. So this is why most people score low on the first few questions. So here are the essential sketching skills. You must know how to fully define sketches, okay? So make sure that every sketch is fully defined so that it has proper dimensions and relations. Also, lock origins correctly, okay? So position your sketch origins as a reference point. Where are you gonna put your origin? It's very important. Then use geometric relations. So once you create a sketch, first define relations and then add dimensions. And also where you can mirror sketch elements, make sure you mirror them properly, okay? Now, what are the common sketching mistakes? Duplicated entities, so avoid creating duplicated geometry that causes conflict. Honor defining geometry, right? So this is leaving sketches, honor defined leads to unstable models. And then later when you change something, everything collapses. 
Random tool clicking, beginners often click tools randomly instead of planning. So make sure once you see the task that you plan in your head, what you're gonna do first, second, third, and so on. And also over modeling, using too many planes, features, all of these creates complex sketches, models, then later when you change something, you have a mess, okay? So make sure you plan everything in advance so you don't get lost in the complexity. Then the second thing is design intent, okay? So what is design intent? Design intent is about creating models that respond logically to the measures that change. Why this matters? Because this ensures your model is stable. It facilitates easy modifications and demonstrates engineering thinking. And this is all about certifications, is design intent, right? How you model your part that if we change something, it doesn't collapse. So here are the key design intent elements. You have to ask yourself, which sketch should drive the model? Which one is the main one? What feature must come first? How to avoid over modeling? How to avoid using too many planes? How to make part update without breaking? Okay, so the common mistake is that people don't plan features in order and they don't use correct references. So my advice before starting any part, ask yourself which sketch will drive this model and what is the logical sequence of features? And you have to train yourself to think on this way. Then also you must have the drawing interpretation skills. You will not have to create a drawing, but you're gonna to have to read the drawings, right? You're gonna to have to recognize different views. So here are the drawing views you must read. Front, top, right view, right? Those are the basic orthographic projections showing object shape from different angles. Then we have isometric views. These are the 3D-like representations showing all three dimensions. Then we have section views. This shows internal features by cutting through the object. We have detail view. This is the large view of specific area for better understanding. Also what I test you, alternate position view, right? When you have mechanism, something changes. And also check other views that you will have to recognize. So once again, CSWA will not test you to create drawings, but it will test your ability to recognize a drawing view, okay? So make sure you know all of the drawing views. Now, here's the best practice strategy in common failure patterns. So you can't pass exam by watching tutorials, okay? Or by learning random tools. You must practice real CSWA type models. You must practice under time pressure because it's different when you don't have the time pressure and when you have. Then also you must practice without step-by-step -step instructions that someone gives you. And also you must practice with timed attempts. So my advice, build parts, time yourself, make modifications and see what results you're gonna get. Now common failure patterns. As we mentioned, sketch not fully defined. And because of that, you're gonna get a wrong mass, wrong geometry, wrong volume, wrong center of mass. Then wrong starting plane, right? If you choose wrong plane to start creating a sketch and you have to calculate center of the mass, you're gonna get a wrong results. Then also wrong feature order. If you choose the wrong feature sequence, then later you have to change some dimensions or some parameters in the feature, everything will collapse, okay? And the last thing here is the exam strategy and the system setup. So CSWA is three hours exam. So you must have a plan, right? You cannot get stuck on the one model. So plan your time carefully. Don't spend more than 10 minutes on a single model. So if something takes more than 10 minutes, skip, move on, and then return later if time permits. And also when you calculate mass, center the mass, check out your units. That's very important. And also you will not get exact number but your results must be within 1%, okay? So don't panic if you don't get the exact number because that's not gonna happen more likely, but you must be within 1%. Now also make sure you check out your units, make sure you don't have any programs running in the back. This can make you problems during the exam. Also save your part frequently. That's very important, okay? So when you do something, save your part always. And this is it. This is practically what you need for a CSWA exam. If you want the sample of the CSWA exam that you can practice on, you can click the link below 
and you can access my free community and then you can access to this sample. See you there.